What is going on everybody and welcome to part two of the TensorFlow Object Detection API tutorial. And in this video, what I'm going to be showing you guys is how we can do um, something a little more custom than just loading in simple images. We can also load in video or what I'm going to be doing here is using a webcam. If uh, you are not familiar with OpenCV, which is what we're going to be using, you can just come to pythonprogram.net, search for OpenCV, and it'll be this series here. And then coming down to part two is where we're actually going to be loading in from a, uh, a webcam source. But you can also load in a, an actual like a video file if you don't have a webcam or whatever. So anyway, this is just to show you um, how quick the video detection actually is, at least on a GPU. Um, and then also how to, you can, how to start to adapt this code to something you might actually want to use it with. So anyway, uh, minimizing this, I'm going to come over here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that notebook to a Python file. So I'm just going to do Jupyter notebook and if you want to keep it in Jupyter, by all means keep it in Jupyter. Um, I just want to convert it myself. Uh, where are you? There you are. So if you want to convert it, file, download as Python and then I'm going to do underscore converted. Good. And I'm actually all set here. I'm going to edit this. Also, if you need to install OpenCV or whatever, um, you can use that tutorial series. So if you don't have it already installed, pause this and go to that tutorial and make sure you install um, CV2. Okay, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is first of all, we need to import um, CV2. So we're going to do import CV, not in all caps though import cv2 and then we're going to say the capture is cv2.video capture and if you just have one webcam it would be zero i'm using one of my webcams to record me right now so i'm actually going to use my first webcam or my second webcam basically so that's why i'm putting that in there but if you're following along and you have a webcam i would put in um zero so um so now that we have that uh the other thing we need to do is basically i'm going to come down here and I'm just going to get rid of this because that's not what we're going to, we're not going to use matplotlib anymore to show anything. Um, and then also, let's see if there's anything else we need to get rid of. But there was, yeah, this matplotlib line, we don't need that either. So I'm just going to delete that as well. So that was the line just in case that was too quick. It's like this get ipython magic stuff. Just delete that because that's, that's not necessary as well. Okay, so once we've got the video, all we're going to do is we're going to head down to that basically main loop area. So scrolling down into here, like basically this for loop is that main loop area. And what it was doing was iterating through images in a directory. But instead, we could actually just have it iterate or not even iterate, but just go through the frames from a webcam or iterate through frames in a video or whatever. So we're going to be using the webcam. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, wow, true. And then what are we gonna do? Well, it, rather than this this image being image equals image dot open and then converting it to a numpy array and all that, I'm actually gonna delete this and we're just gonna say ret comma, which is just return information and then image underscore NP equals cap dot read because this is gonna come back already as a numpy array. We don't have to, we don't have to convert it. So once we've done that, um, now we're ready to just basically come down uh, here and let's actually visualize it. So again, <laughs> the only changes we're making is just right here with the images. Um, I mean, we could probably delete all this stuff and, and this too, um, but I'm not gonna really clean it up too much, but you could clean it up a little bit more, but these are just the simple changes that we're gonna need to make just to get this to work. So now let's actually show this. So we're gonna do cv2.mshow and we're just gonna call it object detection. You can call the window, this is just what the window name is. You can call it whatever you want. And then we're gonna do a cv2.resize just to make sure it fits. I'm not sure, I think this would display based on like the default camera resolution. I don't really know what it is. Um, I just know it's it's uh, it's not a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So anyway, I'm just gonna use 800 by 600 so it's not distorted and it's not too large to show on video. Um, and then what we're gonna do is um, we just throw in this little bit of code. Basically this is weight key 25 and 0xff equals ord q. So what this is just saying is basically if we exit out the window, um, or rather actually if we just press the, if we just press q, um, 
we'll exit. And actually, I think we can get away with just having this wait key here. Um, but we'll go ahead and use um, for the queue as well. So you can press Q to close basically what we're doing. Anyway, cv2.destroy all windows, camel cased, if that's the case, and then break. And if you don't have this code here, for whatever reason, it's kind of surprising to me. I don't know exactly how that works in the back end, but basically if you don't have this code here, it won't actually keep iterating. So it's kind of weird because this is only here for if you want to like break the entire like running of this this loop. Um, but if you don't have this if check here, um, it just won't iterate. So I'm not really sure why that why that works that way, but it does. Someone can comment below and, and educate me why that how that works on uh, OpenCV's end. Maybe it's really obvious, so I'm just missing it. Anyway, I hit run. Well, I pressed F5 anyway, and it's just going to take a little bit for everything to kind of load up. It's got to load into the model and get the GPU version of TensorFlow going, but once it does, it, it'll pop up, and then I can kind of show you guys some examples of um, objects being detected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause it while we wait. It shouldn't take too much longer, but I don't want to waste anybody's time. Yep, it was just a second longer, but anyway, here it is, and it looks like um, I did not camel case wait key. What an amateur. This. All right, Run, running again, pausing. <laughs> For some reason, I swear it. Oh, my caps lock is on. Okay, really camel casing, pausing again. All right, so it is ready. It's detecting a person on top of my uh, shelf there. That's not good. It's not very good. And my dogs are barking. Lovely. Anyways, show must go on. So, okay, it is running. And like I was saying before, um, you know, the frames per second, it's not like it's doing like 60, but it's probably like 15 to 20, which is actually pretty good for like a, a running stream of detection. And with, um, you know, all the objects it's detecting here. I mean, I, I know at least here the list is 90, but I think actually full like the whole Coco like um, common objects and context. Um, I think it's 300, but I'm, I'm not positive. It might be 90. But anyways, there's a lot of possible objects. But anyway, just for an example, we've got person here, which is correct, chair. Sometimes it calls it a couch, yeah, but I mean, it's pretty close. Yeah, I think it just sees cushions, but um, should be able to do like a bottle. Mm, there we go. Oh, it's, apparently it's a wine glass. Here, it's a bottle now. Anyway, so you got a bottle. Um, probably it'll do a phone. That's my guess anyway. Yep, cell phone. So pretty cool. Anyway, uh, so that's just one example of adapting this code to do something else, something other than just classifying images. Because again, to me, classifying the images isn't that exciting because we've been able to do that with like the, the hog plus SVM algorithm. Whereas classifying video at a decent frames per second is um, a, a much a much more impressive uh, task. Um, and, and this does it really well and it's a pretty lightweight model and everything. So this is pretty cool. Now, um, pressing Q. Um, in the future, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I'll probably show, because I showed some code of basically using this object detection algorithm to basically create an aimbot in Grand Theft Auto. I'll probably do that, but I won't be including it in this series. So if you want to see that, you can go to the Python Plays GTA series. Um, otherwise, uh, the next thing I want to do in this series is show how we can create our own classifier or our own object basically. So there's a few things we could do. We could train our own object detection algorithm completely and just train it on one object, or we can add this object to an already pre-existing model, or we can use that model's weights um, to at least give us a head start on training a new object. So anyway, um, that's the next thing I'd like to cover with these, this TensorFlow object detection API, because basically up to this point, we really haven't trained any model at all. We've just been using a pre-trained model, which um, honestly, there's so many things we can do with that already, um, but there's still a little bit more that we can get out of this object detection API, so I definitely want to show that as well. So anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.